Hey, what's up everyone? So I got a really quick video for you today and I kind of just want to talk about the EM1 Mark II. I wanted to mention some things that I didn't mention in my main video, which is right there if you want to check it out. So the three things that I want to talk about are some quirks about this camera that I didn't mention yet. I want to talk about rigging this camera, how I rig it out, and some pieces of gear that I think work really well with it. And three, I want to talk about grading and LUTs. So how I work with this 8-bit image and some LUTs that I've created for this camera. It has a lot of features that are great for content content creators like the autofocus. Check that out. And the autofocus is so good that I don't think that I could ever go back to using a camera without it when it comes to making YouTube videos. But there's also some features in this camera that I think are really geared towards cinematographers or filmmakers like the True 24P, DCI 4K, the clean HDMI out and waveforms and focus peaking. Those are some things that I really think are strengths of the EM1 Mark II when it comes to being a filmmaking tool. But there are some things that I forgot to mention about this camera that are a little quirky. The first one being that longer video clips are gonna get split up into multiple different clips when you bring it into your computer. So in the resolution and codec that I use, I think it's after like two and a half minutes it gets split up into another video clip. So if I film like a nine minute video, it's gonna be like three or four different video clips, which is kind of annoying because my Panasonic cameras didn't do that. The second thing that kind of annoys me is that the battery door on this EM1 Mark II, it doesn't have the little rubber gasket that a lot of the Panasonic GH cameras do, where you can put a dummy battery in there and then still close the battery door. You can't do that with this camera. If you wanna use a dummy battery and power it off of a V-mount for like really, really long shoots, you'll have to either take the battery door off somehow or just leave it open with a dummy battery inside. So that's kind of a bummer. One thing I think that's worth mentioning that's a pro is that the focus peaking on this camera works really, really well. I have the AE button programmed as my focus peaking button. And when you press it, it actually brightens the entire image as well. So you're not only gonna be able to see the focus peaking markers, but you're also gonna see a brighter image, which I think is really, really handy, especially when you're trying to do manual focus in lower light conditions. So one thing I did wanna mention about this camera is that shooting in 1080p, you're not gonna get the most detailed 1080p out there. The 1080p isn't horrible, but if you compare it to you know cameras like the A6000 or the GH3, it's not really that much better than those cameras. I found that it's kind of lacking as far as detail and sharpness. So the only time that I've ever really used 1080p is the 60 frames per second option if I just wanted to slow something down. But right now I'm shooting in 1080 24 in all I, 202 megabits per second. And as you can see, it looks decent, but again, I would only use 1080p for 60. I definitely wouldn't shoot 24 unless I really needed to save on card space. So next, let's talk about rigging this camera. Now, unfortunately, there aren't a lot of options when it comes to cages for this camera. Small Rig used to make one, and I was very, very lucky that I found one for sale on eBay, and I actually bought this half cage way before I, I even ordered the EM1 Mark II. So unless you can be really lucky like me and try to find one of these Small Rig cages, you're gonna have to look into like a universal half cage. A fellow YouTuber with the channel name IMCE posted a video about his EM1 Mark II and how he rigs it. So you can check that out for some rigging inspiration. But seriously, if anyone at Small Rig is watching this video, please make more stuff for the EM1 Mark II and Mark III. There's still people out here who use them and that'd be really cool if we didn't have to scrounge for used ones on eBay. <laughs> some things that I've added to this half cage are a NATO rail with a cold shoe on it. That allows me to put my favorite Small Rig NATO handle on top. And this one is perfect. I think it's a perfect size for this rig. And then my Comica VM10 on the side. I also have a cold shoe on the left hand side of the cage and that's where I put my receiver for my wireless microphones. I really don't feel like I need anything more than just a cage on this camera and I love the half cage design because it still gives me a place to grip the camera on the right hand side and the lens that I use on this camera the most is the Olympus 12 to 40 f2.8 pro lens. That's what I'm using right now and just gives me a lot of versatility. It allows me to shoot really wide or shoot at a more standard focal length like this. Like I've said with this camera it's a very very digitally sharp looking camera, at least in my opinion. So I definitely think that it's worth it to soften the image a bit. So I always use a diffusion filter. Right now I'm using the Nissi Black Mist filter, but you can go for the Tiffin Black Pro Mist, the Tiffin Glimmer Glass, or maybe even look into some of the cheaper Black Mist options that are coming out from KNF Concept or something like that. Like I said, the battery life on this camera is awesome. So you don't really need an external battery solution. And because there's two card slots on this camera, you can just take two SD cards and you'll be good to shoot basically all day. Lastly, let's talk about 
grading this footage. Now, as I said before, I don't really like to shoot in the OM Log 400. It's not horrible, but my viewpoint on log footage is it really needs to be in a 10-bit codec. If it's not, then it just falls apart so, so easily. So if you're shooting with this camera, I definitely would say stay away from OM Log 400 if you're first starting out. I have seen some really good stuff with the OM Log, but it's not my favorite. I like the flat profile a lot better. It just gives a much more easier image to edit and I can see if my highlights are gonna be blowing out because that's one thing about this camera is that it cannot recover highlights very well. With a lot of flat or log footage, a lot of people like to, you know, expose to the right or, you know, expose for the shadows. I would say with this camera, just try to hit your exposure like dead in the middle. Don't expose too far to the right or to the left. Just try to get it nice and properly exposed when you're shooting in flat and it should look really good. And I have made some LUTs for the flat picture profile on this camera. And I'm actually using one of them right now to grade this shot. So if you're interested in getting some of the looks that I get in my videos, the LUTs are available on my website right now for purchase and I'll have the link in the description. They're really inexpensive, so you can go check them out. But other than that, if you'd like to check out some more videos about some cheap cameras, I'm gonna have a link to those right there. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will catch you all next time. Later.